We see clear evidence every day that life is not fair. This is not surprising or subject to debate. Sometimes it appears in subtle touches, hints, and other times it manifests itself in, horrible, in terrible, jarring ways. One example of this, which I think no one will dispute, is that beautiful people have an easier path than others. With beauty comes a pass. There is a ton of instances to support this, from the common sense of daily observation to the bulwark of scientific studies. Simply put, beautiful people, on the whole, do better. They get elected, they become stars, they make more money, they get the promotions. People want to be with them, want to do things for them. Beauty is attractive, magnetic. People want to be near beautiful people, and they want to think of them as good. Beauty is a tremendous asset. Beauty is a kind of royalty. Beauty either is a fantasy or inspires it. In stories, beauty is often linked inexorably to the beast. Beauty is the angel of our nature, and the beast is the burning hell. They are at once inseparable and irreconcilable, a sticky combination, one that has conjured many powerful stories. What exactly makes a person beautiful is not easy to specify, but as the saying goes, you know it when you see it. You are the eye of the beholder. We also have beauty pageants to judge it. The standards may vary over time and cultures, but beautiful people stand out and they get the best treatment. They are celebrated, they become celebrities, for their beauty alone. All of the people on TV are beautiful, with the exception of a few, who are clowns, jesters, wound into the mix to amuse the beautiful ones, and to remind the rest of us that not everyone is beautiful. Television can suggest otherwise because it is a virtual parade of beautiful people. If you have a talent, let's say you can sing, and you are also beautiful, then that is a twofer, a double play. You are twice blessed, and a whole world of opportunity awaits you. If you are a great athlete, and you're beautiful or handsome, then the chances are good that you live in a fantasy world, a magic kingdom others dream about. Handsome is as handsome does. Your partner will be beautiful, a supermodel. Your children will be beautiful, your very life will soon be the model of the beautiful, charmed existence. Until you screw it up by fooling around, which is easy because the offers are everywhere and constant, and suddenly your beautiful, scornful partner is coming after you with a golf club, or worse, a lawsuit. Beauty, I mean to say, is no intangible factor. It, and its effect, is very real, and can be measured as some of those scientific studies have. It is as real and quantifiable as intelligence, or strength, or quickness. It is also rare, as gems are rare. We value animals that we consider beautiful. Even in nature, give us what is beautiful and we will admire it, declare it a national park. We will preserve it, set it aside. But the plains? Obviously they were far too plain, and now they're gone. Topped with asphalt and cement, roads and malls, convenience stores and housing developments, and no one misses the poor old plains. Or the wetlands or the marshes. Who gives a shit about a marsh? The vast majority of people are like the plains. They're certainly not beautiful. They may not be outright ugly. They're just plain, ordinary, common, forgettable. Beautiful people, we set them apart try to build on that beauty, as if evolution could sharpen that beauty and we could produce a human that was an improvement, that was better than the rest of us. This, in spite of the fact that selective breeding has led to hemophilia, albinism, and insanity. It's nonsense, but every civilization has venerated its bloodlines, preferring the thoroughbreds to the mutts, the racially pure to the half-breeds. We revere beauty, and we elevate the ones who have it, hoping that something even better might come along. And that, I think, is what beauty is, or so eminently represents. Hope.